It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Mother Teresa sent a letter to the Fourth World Conference on women in Beijing in 1995. Here's what she had to say. If a mother can kill her own child, what is left but for us to kill each other? I'm going to show you um, a few pictures, folks. This first picture and the second picture is a 16-week unborn baby. Take a close look. That's an unborn baby, 16 weeks. All right, there it is. Then I have a little film I want to show you. You could run that film, Sam. There you go. That's an unborn baby, folks. There it is. Take a look at that. Okay. Now, isn't that amazing? God's creation. Well, you know what they're doing to people, little unborn babies like that? They're pulling that little guy's head off, or a girl's head, their arms, and crushing them. And, and they feel it's okay. You know why, folks? They're an inconvenience. They're an inconvenience. Now, I would ask my friends who are seniors to please listen to this show. For that matter, this is a very important show. I have three very important guests on the show. Um, and we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about inconvenience. So a mother doesn't want her child, boom, aborted. That little baby pulled apart, think nothing of it. Um, seniors who are assistant living homes, nursing homes, or at home, who become an inconvenience. Well, maybe we should get rid of them too. How about these young people that are running around with the signs, you know, we, we want to keep, we got to abort, don't take ab abortions away from etc. God forbid they get in an accident in their hospital and they're in serious situations. They become an inconvenience. Well, today we're going to talk about three areas. Talk about the women's part of it. Talk about the medical part, of course, about the moral part. I'm very happy to have back on the show Father Peter O'Rourke. Uh, Marianne Lahan and Dr. Frank Paladorio. Let me talk, start with you, Marianne. We hear it all the time, and you know, uh, women's rights, you can do, this is my body. Um, who are you to tell me what to do? I will do whatever I want to do, okay? Your response to that, because I think you're a pretty liberal girl. Well, I'm going to approach it first of all, and, and people usually see me as Marianne Lahan, President of Pennsylvanians for Human Life, but let me approach that answer in a different way as a feminist for life. And let's talk about the early days of the feminist movement. And I did keep a little couple notes, but Victoria Woodhoff was one of the first feminists, and she wrote in her newspaper that the rights of children begin in the womb. And in the, the next year, we will be celebrating the 100th year of women given the right to vote. Uh, Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Scanton, uh, Alice Paul, these great women who demanded that women be able to vote and stood outside the White House, were jailed, had feeding tubes inserted into them because they were on a hunger strike. They fought for us to vote, so I urge every woman to get out there and to vote. But when you do, let love be your energy and not fear. Um, one thing I just want to say on a side note is that after 150 men have been recognized in the state of New York with statues, um, next year there will be an unveiling of the statue of Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Scanton as we celebrate the 100th year anniversary of women being. But I want to address that question in a compassionate way. Feminists for Life, Pennsylvanians for Human Life, we demand justice for women and compassion. When you say, how can a woman do it? God blessed me when he allowed me to experience a level of poverty. Did you ever, did any of you ever walk out of a grocery store with your held, head held down because when you went to pay for the groceries for your kids, the card was declined? And you're like, oh, I hope no one ever <laughs> saw that that knows me. The, the humility of poverty. 
the injustice, the abandonment of fathers for their families. These are the things. We live in a society where educating people about that child. Our, our girls today, the young girls today, lived in a society that never remembered a time without Roe versus Wade that said, you know, this is your body and you have a right. They grew up in a society that was devoid of that law that, that protected the child within them. And they're scared, they're alone. Poverty, we have to face the injustices that women experience. Do you know what it's like to be in college and, and be pregnant? And so now you're probably that, that rate of women dropping out of school, and now you have thousands of dollars Worth of, worth of student loans and, and a lifetime back to poverty, that your dreams have been taken away. So what we have to do is not go with, with that pro-abortion attorney who said women need to be relieved of pregnancy. I say to you, women need to be relieved of injustice. We need to create a society that's willing to say, you don't have to do this. Not you can't do it. You don't have to do this. Let me empower you. Let me give you the strength. I'll walk beside you. Let me help you get through this moment of fear and abandonment and loneliness because that's why women seek abortion. The vast majority, almost 80% of women seeking abortion are also experiencing financial difficulty. The vast majority of women seeking abortion are African American women. So the and the vast and and a great majority of women are going back for the second abortion, showing you that abortion wasn't a solution. They're back there. We have to raise them out of the injustice that they are experiencing. We have to stop judging them and reaching out and saying, I can you don't have to do it. I can give you a better answer. I know that if you pick abortion, that years from now, that reality hits you, my little girl would have been in kindergarten, yeah. or yeah. my child would, would have been in yeah. that class. Yeah, they don't and talk about cutting that. Yeah. and depression yeah. and, and all kinds of uh, alcoholism, drug use. Yep. All the side effects of that decision live with you. With your organization, and we keep saying this, and believe me, it's 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 it's, it's traumatic when you know you're you're pregnant, etc. And <clears throat> the thing is that there is help out there. We there's a lot of help out there, and there's thousands upon thousands of people who want to adopt. Okay, who are fighting f for adoption, folks. I'm talking to Father Peter O'Rourke. Marianne Lahan and Dr. Polidoro. This is just basically, folks, uh, a, a, an educational type show. Uh, I, I don't want to force anything. Uh, for those of you who have said, and some of you have sent me emails and saying that I'm one-sided uh, on, on the political issues, first of all, that's complete nonsense. I'm one-sided in one area. I am one-sided in one area, and that's pro-life. There's no question about it. Quote me, I am pro-life 100%. But when it comes to politicians, they all have an opportunity of coming on this show and talking about what they want to talk about. We come back, we're going to actually show you exactly what some politicians really think it's okay. Showed you a picture. I'm going to show them again when we come back. And I want you to think about this. And remember, seniors, and remember all you people out there who are healthy. How many of you know you just heard, uh-oh, did you hear such and such was in a bad accident? Oh, my God. And they're in the hospital. How are they doing? They're not doing too well. They're an inconvenience. They're an inconvenience. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Santa Sand Show, folks. What you're looking at, what you're looking at, take a close look at this, folks. It's a 16-week unborn baby. 16-week unborn baby. All right? Now, in the state of Pennsylvania, I think it's over 20 weeks. You could go in there and have this little baby ripped apart, pull their legs, crush the head. Think nothing of it. Think nothing of it. Because somebody thinks it's an inconvenience. Uh, on my show today, Father Peter O'Rourke, talk about the moral part of this. 
we heard from Marianne Lahan, and now we're here from Dr. Polidora. Frank, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me here. And, and you know, Frank, I'd like to have a, 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 a whole session on all the knowledge that you have, but what I want to talk about is the medical part here, okay? Um, we just showed an actual live unborn baby uh, and what they, what they do. But what's your perspective on this, Frank? I'll, I'll be very blunt. Abortion is mechanized killing. Mechanized, mechanized killing, okay? If you look at what abortionists want to do, they want to set up a production line so they can get the women in and out quickly, make their money, and go home and do whatever else they want to do. They use different uh, methods. Most abortions take place early in pregnancy, and essentially it's what a woman would call a DNC, or uh, you know, using a curette, which is a sharpened instrument to go in there and scrape the inside of the womb, or a suction. Later on, it's, it's, uh, it's suction, um, and dismembering the baby. Um, in the past, people have tried different things. If you look at this, these are all barbaric methods because you're essentially tearing a human being apart. It, early on in the 30s, people even tried uh, formalin, something that we would preserve a body in, okay? Uh, later on, they tried, I don't think they do this much anymore, they tried hypertonic saline, 25% salt solution injected into the uterus. Seawater is only 3.5% salt. Think how much that burns if you had a cut, and these little, these little ones don't have any big protection on their skin. Um, other things that have been done is to use um, uh, things to induce abortion, like prostaglandins to, to make the, the uterus contract early on. Um, with a lot of these abortions, things have to be done to disrupt the normal course of things, which is the, the cervix, the, the uh, opening of the womb is closed for obvious reasons with a, a plug, a mucus plug, and it has to be violated. And this is, if you like complications, for example, they're not that common, but they still occur infection. Like a lot of these women that are going to come in for these later term abortions have a, 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 a laminaria inserted, which is a, a, something concocted from seaweed that absorbs water and gradually enlarges. Um, the, uh, the later, and also if you look at complications, you always hear that, well, abortion is very safe, but you're really comparing apples to oranges. They're doing, they're comparing abortion to pregnancy, uh, pregnancy lasts nine months, abortions done early on, and so those ones are going to be less risky. But if you take abortions that are done later and later in the pregnancy, they become riskier and riskier. And some of the, some of the stuff I've read said that the, the rate of, uh, of death and other complications is much, much higher. For example, if you're putting instruments into a uterus early on, the uterine wall is relatively thick. Later on, it becomes thinner and thinner. Obstetricians can feel the baby, the, the mother can feel the baby through the womb, which is like five millimeters thick. So, for example, rupture of, of, of a uterus, laceration of, of a cervix, uh, hemorrhage, uh, infection. Uh, there's something called DIC, which is essentially a, your clotting system goes awry. These are very uncommon, but these can kill women. Um, if you look at even the, the, the abortion drug, RU486, in its trials in, in France, there was a woman that died. Uh, it was reported, I think, in 91 or 92 by the French literature. So this is not a benign procedure for the woman. For the baby, obviously, it's, it's death, and it's a cruel death. You know, pain, we're talking about, you know, about the situation with uh, when abortions can be done in Pennsylvania. They can be done uh, up to 24 weeks. And I'm pretty sure that there was a, a, a movement in our legislature to pass a law that would bring it down to 20. Why? Because almost everyone agrees that 20-year-old ba uh, in, in utero babies can feel pain. But it's my understanding if this law would have been practiced, the present governor would have vetoed it, okay? Um, so, you know, you have these things to, the, to the, the, the child. Then you have the doctor, and I'll go into this really quickly. Um, there actually is an effect on the doctors that are doing this. Um, I, I, am, I am privy to knowledge. Um, there's there's a, a young doctor who's a pathology resident in a, an, an Eastern University uh, someplace on the East Coast, either up or down, I won't mention his name. But he had a situation on a Saturday where he had a, had a specimen brought in. It was a, an eight-month-old little girl that had been aborted. And, uh, eight months? Eight months. Eight months. And he was to describe it. 
the abortionist came in and pointed at the baby like this and said, I want those. The resident said, you want what? I want those ovaries. And the, and the resident had the wherewithal to say that's not part of the protocol. You, it's Saturday, you can talk to the attending on Monday. Now the same resident a year before had symptoms of PTSD from dealing with dismembered babies, describing them, okay? So there's an effect on the doctor and there's an effect, you look at that doctor that came in that wanted those ovaries. Frank, what we have there, okay, is uh, for a matter of time, okay, we have a partial birth partial birth abortion. Right. Of course, Michelle Obama and Hillary Clinton, and I'm not being, this is facts, they think what you're going to show is okay. Show us what an partial birth abortion is. Okay, this is, this is a 26-year-old uh, in utero baby. 26 weeks. I'm sorry, 26 weeks. I'm right. sorry, they say 26 right. yeah, years. Yeah. 26, well, again, we were all this way, by the way. Yes. All of us were this way. Yeah. We were all this at, at one time. So essentially, the... The abortionist does this thing where they dilate the cervix over anywhere from one to three days, get it wide enough to get their instruments in. Okay, the baby's in the mom, so essentially the front of the mom's here, the head's down here, let's say. And hold that up so Tim can get a okay. shot at that. And then what happens is the, the uh, abortionist will um, open up the amniotic sac, let the fluid drain out. Then the abortionist will use an ultrasound to find the position of the baby, and I think that was an ultrasound you had on there, there. Mm -hmm. They can actually see where the baby is. They'll reach inside the, the woman's uterus with an instrument like this, try to find one of the legs, and they'll pull the baby down so that now the, the leg is out, they'll get their hands and they'll pull the other baby out. If they're right-handed, the baby's... So basically, think of this. This is the cervix. This is the, the vaginal vault. The, the baby's legs are out here. All right, the abortionist gets his non-dominant hand, puts it, gets a scissors, usually a medicine bomb, and sticks it right into the neck, into the, into the spinal cord, into the brain, into the back of the head, and then gets a suction and just sucks out the brain so that now he gets what he wants, which is a dead baby uh, in, into, into the world, so he's not responsible for it anymore. What I find interesting with this, he never sees the face. And I, I think I've said this before on your show, think about in, in, in war, we make the enemy faceless, we dehumanize them. So this is a exceedingly dehumanizing, he's trying to take away the person of, the, of this person. So folks, uh, what you looked at is, is exactly what, why, why do I get upset? I get upset because how can anyone who has any substance in their life how can Hillary Clinton, Michelle Obama, that, that you see and they glorify them and they're beautiful, and the, the substance that they could say, this is okay. I am just blown away by it. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the San Luis Show, folks. Um, we're talking about um, uh, abortions. We're talking about uh, if you're inconvenient, uh, and it's an educational show. 24-7 SSP TV, you can watch all of our shows, most especially folks, for those of you who have relatives or friends anywhere in the world, I have people in Afghanistan watching us on the app, search SSP TV. If you, have, you don't have cable, download YouTube, search SSP TV, and subscribe. My guest today, Father Peter O'Rourke, Marianne Laha, and Dr. Frank Palmadora. Um, Father, we talk about the moral thing and how people should really look at this. So we talked about, of course, unborn babies. You, you saw the 16-week-old baby and another baby, a human being, where they think nothing of pulling arms and crushing. People who are in office vote to provide these things to happen, okay? But before we get to that, what is your concept on the moral issue? Well, uh, Sam, it isn't my concept. Uh, it's, it's the teaching that comes to us from, you know, from the teaching of the church, which is derived from the natural law. If we look at the natural law, that's the law that's, that's really ingrained in our hearts from the time we're created. And we, we consider that the teaching of the church has been, has been, has been the same, you know, from the time of creation right on through. And it, you know, it, 
it tells us, if I could, I'm just going to read what the Catholic Church teaches on this, but this, and this is especially on abortion. Human life must be protected and respected absolutely from the moment of conception, from the first moment of his existence, a human being must be recognizing, must be recognized as having the rights of a person, among which is the inv inviolable right of every innocent being to life. Since the first century, the church has affirmed the moral evil of procured abortion of everyone. You shall not kill the embryo by abortion and shall, and shall not cause the newborn to perish. That comes from the Didache, the earliest extant writings that is, that is attributed to the uh, apostles right from the teaching of the church. When we look at human life, we have to look at it with, from a perspective that, that you know, gives us the truth. It, it really, you know, it, 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 it's logic based on truth, objective truth. We need to look at that. We need to use common sense and, and look at the unborn child, okay, in the womb and see it, just as we saw here at the beginning of the show. And to realize and to, and, to, and to give that child, that unborn child, you know, the personhood that it really is. That's the moral aspect of, of this whole issue. Unfortunately, people who have faith, and, and I, you know, I see it around me for the past 46 years, people who have faith seem to get so frustrated with these things, they understand right, the dignity and the human person in the womb. They understand that. But they can become so frustrated with the politics that's associated with it, so frustrated, that they don't want to hear it anymore. What they do is tell them, you know, out of, out of, out of sight, out of mind, and they just are so frustrated they don't want to do or can't do anything about it. I think at this, at this point in time, you know, enough is enough. What I've experienced over the last several weeks in regards to politics and, and the nomination of, of the Supreme Court judge and how this particular judge was treated, it made me sick. I was really, really frustrated over the whole thing and couldn't imagine that that could be done to a person to destroy that person's life and not only his but his family just made me really upset. And I believe that that's a part of where we're at today. People, you know, when they use common sense and they use logic that's based on true fact, okay, they, they're called, they have a moral opportunity to do something about it. I'd just like to give you a, you know, a, a witness that, that uh, just occurred with me. I was visiting my brother in Florida for 10 days. He has a lot of friends down there, that type of personality. And while we were out to dinner one night with several of the people, a young lady had asked if she could ask me a question. And I said, yes, but she didn't want to ask it around the table, so we went outside in the vestibule. The question that she asked was, was this, why does the Catholic Church continue to just instill guilt on our consciences? That was the question. And I said, you know, my response to that was, why? I said, first of all, uh, you know, our conscience, which a lot of us don't want to admit to, our conscience comes from, you know, the natural law that's burned in our hearts. We don't need anybody to tell us the difference between right and wrong. And I said to her at that particular point, you know, your conscience is you. That's your conscience. And if you have any guilt that's coming from that, especially from perhaps the teaching of objective truth, she said, I don't believe in objective truth. Everything is subjective. And I said, precisely, that's where our society is today. I said, but when you look at objective truth, right, and she says, well, I told you I don't believe in objective truth. And I asked her at that point what she did for a living. She said she was a teacher. And not only a teacher, but she taught biology, and she teaches biology even to an advanced uh, number of, of uh, young adults in high school. 
And I said to her, you're a teacher, but you don't believe in objective truth. She said, that's right. Truth is what you want to make it. And I said, well, I have to question you on the science that you're teaching because it is, it is not exact science. It's more, you know, in a better term that I would use today, it's more like a fake science. And she said, what? And I said, let's just take objective truth and let's look at science. Exact science deals with quantities, measurements. It measures things. It takes an hypothesis or a, a theory. It brings every part of it that they can bring together in order to be able to prove it false or true. That's exact science. It's not something that is a fake science that we can, we can input our own ideologies into it and then, and then offer it to our children. Exact science. Can exact science prove the existence of God? I asked her. She said, absolutely not. But I also said to her, nor can it prove that God doesn't exist because God is immeasurable. But I can tell you one thing, what is measurable is human life. And science has, by its exact measurements, proved that life begins at conception. Human life begins at conception. It has a beginning and it has an end. At that point, she backed off two steps. There was no answer, and the only answer I got from her was her walking away, and not back into the restaurant, but out the door. You know, Father, it, uh, it saddens me, too, when I see, uh, you know, people that were protesting and, you know, how they were misled. And, of course, the majority of those protesters are paid uh, by the ultra liberals. Uh, it breaks my heart. Uh, we talked about inconvenience. So there's a baby that's inconvenienced, have it aborted. And I told my friends, my seniors, and, and all these healthy women and men who all think it's pro-life, it's um, pro-choice, till they're in a hospital and they become an inconvenience. All of a sudden it's a different story. I could go on and on with this. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. Mary Ann and Frank is always good. Um, folks, um, we have an election coming up. I don't care what you are, Republican or Democrat. Look at the candidates, see where they stand with pro-life. For that person who sends me these emails criticizing me that I'm one-sided, I'm gonna tell you this, I am one-sided when it comes to pro-life. I'm 100% one-sided. Check the politicians who are running for office. Remember I said you could become an inconvenience you can become an inconvenience. For those people who are pro-life, Democrat or Republican, I don't care. But another interesting thing is, and I've said this on my show before, Google the Democrat platform. Google the Democrat platform. See what they stand for, what the actual Democrat platform says. That's all I ask you to do. And then picture the 16-week-old baby and the film we showed you and what they do. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.